Hello and welcome friends of St. Peter's. We're so grateful that you chose to join us for worship this weekend. Whether you're a longtime member of St. Peter's or you saw this video pass by because a friend of yours liked and shared it, we're glad that you are here. Both on YouTube and on Facebook, in the description of this video, you'll find a link to the bulletin and we encourage you to click on that link so you can join in and do your part as we make this liturgy together. Now, I am so excited, so excited, because we have a special guest preacher this weekend. Bishop Chilton Knudsen uh, was my first bishop as a rector uh, back in Maine. And uh, so many of the things that Reverend Martha thinks she learned from me, I actually learned from Bishop Chilton. And I'm grateful to Bishop Chilton for being with us. She's currently uh, the assisting bishop in the Episcopal Diocese of Washington, but she has served in some incredible places um, in Haiti and in Lexington and, and done an amazing number of really cool ministries uh, even after her retirement commenced. And we're just tickled that she can be with us this weekend. So Bishop Chilton, thank you so much for being here. Fran, <laughs> Fran and John are also here as our electors and we're grateful to them for joining us as well. Our service uh, begins with the opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll pray the great and wonderful together. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O Sovereign of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And we'll pray the prayer for rain together. O God, God, Heavenly Father, who by your Son, Jesus Christ, has promised to all those who seek your kingdom and its righteousness all things necessary to sustain their life, Send us, we entreat you, in this time of need, such moderate rain and showers, that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to your honor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after he had died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Hirosha Hanbi'im. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Libidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah, Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kedesh and Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord God of Israel commands you, Go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Nephtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Zabin's army, 
to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 123, responsively by pull verse. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of their mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in a night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief for you all are children of light and children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness so let us not fall asleep as others do but let us keep awake for to be sober and for those who sleep sleep at night and those who are drunk get drunk at night but since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who received two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of these slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. 
But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I, where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, Bishop Chilton, I promise I did not know what the gospel would be when I asked you to be our guest preacher. <laughs> but I handed you a doozy. I've been telling people over the last few weeks that Matthew's parables are a little edgier than Luke's. And we just heard another example of that today. So Bishop Chilton, welcome to our pulpit, such as it is. We're grateful to have you with us. Thank you, Paige. Uh, as I begin, I want to take just a moment and offer a very quick prayer. O oh God, generous and gracious, from your plenty, we have received everything that we have. And from your plenty, you have made us who we are. And so, God, we turn now to sink deep into your word. Speak to us through your word that we might know you more fully and love you more deeply. All this we ask in the name of the one who is the greatest gift of all, Jesus, our brother and our savior. Amen. Friends, one of my personal saints is a man who's a loyal Episcopalian, actually a member of the Diocese of Maine where Paige and I first met uh, just a couple of years ago, a while back. I guess what I want to say in passing is that I knew her before you did. Uh, and so I feel particularly proud to be here uh, with her and with her other colleagues helping to join us in worship. So this gentleman, who I love dearly and admire greatly, is a wealth manager. That's what you call a financial manager or a financial advisor in certain parts of the world. He's a wealth manager. And before I knew him at all well, and I knew that he was a wealth manager, I had a certain impression that I formed about him long before I even knew him. Uh, that's one of my failings is I tend to form uh, sort of instinctive impressions based on what occupation uh, pe people have. And so I thought he would be somebody who loved money, uh, who loved making lots of money, who loved spending money, who loved helping people with money. And I found out something quite wonderful. He understands that everything we have is from God. And that we're stewards of what God has given us, including the money that we have, be it small or large. But what is so faithful about him is that he really works with people to help them use their money in ways that not only increase their wealth, but also do good. He has what he calls a responsible investing orientation. And because of his advice to people, many folks have found themselves drawn into charitable giving, uh, into giving uh, to worthy causes, and to affiliating themselves with important uh, sort of stock holdings that affirm uh, good business practices, ethical business practices. So he's all about the ethics of money in addition to the job of simply enlarging the wealth of those he serves. It's possible to do both. I think sometimes people have an impression that if you're just maximizing your returns, you can't be socially responsible. He taught me differently. And so one of the things he taught me also is if we live with a reverent awareness that everything we have is a gift, it's a gift that's been bestowed upon us, not because of our own worthiness, 
but because of the goodness and generosity of God. He has a theory about investments, and he thinks of investment as more than just putting money towards some investment vehicle. He thinks of investments as a self-gift. And when you think about it, that really is what it is. If I'm going to invest something of my money, I have to let go of it, don't I? I can't keep it. I can't clutch it. I've got to put it in the hands of someone else for a while. And I know when I do that, I'm taking a risk, however small. I might be, it might be a calculated risk because I have worked with people who have good track records about return on investments and responsible investing. But when we invest something, we let it go. And hopefully, there is a return on our investments. And as we live in that investing, life, we realize that our money can be an instrument of our conscience. It can be an instrument of our social responsibility. So at one level, the parable in front of us says, it's a good thing to invest. And it's a good thing to make money for the person whose money you're investing. That's kind of the you know, top layer of meaning. One of the things I want to just raise up for us is that the person who was fearful about the money that was invested in him or on, on which he was being depended to invest is that he was driven by fear. Master, I know you are a harsh man. And therefore, he took no risk. He didn't so much invest the money as he safeguarded it. It was like putting it in a piggy bank rather than putting it in a savings account. And he got the brunt of his master's ire for that timid response with the master's money. So I wanna raise two questions for us. The first one is what hampers you in your transactions in life be they material or emotional or relational, what hinders you? What, what fear, what kind of fear or concern keeps you from being faithful and doing what your, quote, master wants you to do? And so I'd like us to spend just a moment thinking about how, when we are driven by fear, our options narrow. And we become so concerned to keep ourselves safe that we don't see possibility and we don't offer possibility to others as well. So there's a point for a little reflection. It's always good, I think, to tap inside and see, hmm, what role is fear playing in my decision-making or in my abdication of decision-making? So the next question is a little... Uh, more theological. Do you realize that God has not so much gifted us with things and relationships and blessings as God has invested in us? Uh, God invests in us by giving to us what we have, hoping and prepared by grace to assist us in making more of what God has given us, multiplying, if you will, the blessings that God has showered upon us. And so God's investing in us is an act of God's trust, isn't it? If we could understand that God might have a hesitation or might not want to take a risk, if we could give to God those traits we know are human, which the incarnation allows us to do, then God takes a risk with each of us. God entrusts us with the generous blessings we have, and the expectation is that we will do good with those blessings. We will enlarge them. Perhaps we will not multiply them as much as extend them and broaden them and grow them in our lives. And so we have a creator who has trusted us with everything that we have. 
including the non-material blessings that we have, our families, for example, our friendships, our health, our environment, all of these are blessings that are entrusted to us. And this parable reminds us that there will be a moment of reckoning. There is inevitably a time when we're asked to show what we have got and what we have done with what we have. I believe that moment is a moment that is filled with mercy, that it's not a moment to be fearful about, but it is a moment to be able to sink deep into the mercy of God as we tell the truth about how our lives have spent or enlarged or multiplied or broadened the gifts God has given us. So friends, let me conclude by suggesting Reflect on fear and how it cripples you from doing what you want to or what you know you must or what you know God wants for you to do. Just gently, without any kind of bony finger shaking at yourself, but just gently monitor how fear plays a part in shrinking your possibilities and then reflect on the fact that God has entrusted all that you have, material and non-material, to you with the expectation, the clear direction that you are to spread those gifts, to nurture them, to build them, to strengthen them, and in turn, to pass them along to others. And so thanks be to God for the grace of the clear eyes with which God can bless us, that our clear eyes might see our fear and offer that fear to God. And God has blessed us so deeply with all that we have, entrusting all that we have to us, dependent on the grace of God, and ultimately recognizing we will face the mercy of God every day, the decisions we make, about what we do with what we have been given. Those are important questions for us to dwell in. In light of this parable, may God grant us the insights about how trusted we are. And may God grant us a strengthening in moments of fear that possibilities might enlarge back out again and we might be a blessing to others. Thanks be to God for that grace. Thanks be to God indeed. Oh, amen. With hearts full of gratitude for God's blessings and God's trust in us, let us join our voices together as we share the creed of our baptism, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the prayers of the people, now is a wonderful time to put into the comments, both on YouTube and on Facebook, any birthdays or anniversaries you'd like us to celebrate with you this week. Please join with me in the prayers of the people. Let us rise from our spirit spiritual complacency and offer our prayers to God, responding, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our local and federal judges may have the wisdom of the prophet Deborah, whose strength was revealed in passing judgment for God condemnation when necessary and for growth when warranted. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that we may clothe each other with faith and love, hope and salvation, encouraging one another in discipleship and building up one another for the growth of Christ's body, the church. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may expose our gifts to the light of day, using them as instruments of salvation for those who live on the margins of society and for those who, though rich, have an emptiness too painful to expose. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our treasures of time and money may be used wisely to our personal benefits and for the betterment of our church and society. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may come to the glory of that place where the noise of daily life has given way to the peace of eternal rest. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of great sickness, we flee to you for relief and comfort. Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use for their cure. Comfort those who mourn or who are in great financial distress and do our leaders with wisdom and courage and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please do share with whoever may be with you, two-legged, four-legged, and fluffy, uh, with you the signs of peace. And we draw our hearts together uh, as we offer prayers in thanksgiving for the birthdays and anniversaries we celebrate this week. Watch over thy servants, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we come to our offertory, our deep thanks to you for being so incredibly generous, especially in such a challenging time. If you'd like to make a gift to the mission and ministry of God at St. Peter's, you're welcome to do so, so by text to give. And that number is 858-252-0622. You can go to St. Peter's website at stpetersdelmar.net slash give and make a donation, either a one-time gift or a regular pledge. You can also give through the U.S. mail at P.O. Box 336, Del Mar, California, 92014. And we invite you to walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And having had a moment to make that offering of these gifts and of ourselves, we remember with gratitude that all things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we will pray the prayer of St. Chrysostom together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And Bishop Chilton, I wonder, would you give us a blessing? We'll have to unmute you first, though. <laughs> I have a blessing I love, a Franciscan blessing, and I offer it for us now. May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may seek truth deep in your heart. May God bless you with holy anger at injustice and oppression, that you may tirelessly work for justice and freedom and peace among all people. May God bless you with the gift of tears to shed with those who suffer from pain or rejection or starvation or loss, that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and bring them into a place of joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in this world so that you are able with God's grace to do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God, creator, savior, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, bless and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen, indeed. Bishop Chilton, thank you so much for being with us this weekend. We are so, uh, so blessed. Um, great to have you here. And we're also delighted to welcome to this service Melissa Collins Porter, our junior warden, who will be offering an announcement from our vestry meeting, which we just had last Tuesday. Hello, I'm Melissa Collins Porter, your junior warden. Uh, last Tuesday, your vestry had its monthly meeting. Our thrilling news is that we have approved a contractor for our Trinity expansion project. Peggy Martin, serving as our owner's rep, is very pleased with the price and expertise of the bid from First Mark, and we are going forward with them to break ground on December 1st. First Mark has extensive experience working in Redwood, in renovations and restorations, and is especially skilled at doing construction on sites that are operational, a real blessing for helping hands and the thrift shop. Special thanks to Peggy, Kit Leaguer, our architect, and the Building Expansion Committee. Thank you to all who have pledged and given to this project already. If you have not had a chance to do so, we encourage you to prayerfully consider joining us in making this dream a reality as it will benefit our children's ministry, music ministry, and our thrift shop and its ministry to the larger community. Please contact Mother Page for more information. A special edition Spirit and Times will be headed your way with more information about this project for those of you who are newer to St. Peter's and eager to learn more about it. Our controller, Heather Vaden, gave the most recent finance report. October was a very good month, thanks to your generosity. Thank you. So far, we have received over $360,000 in pledges for 2021. We're excited to share that every vestry member has pledged. If you haven't, please do join us. It will make your heart glad. We also discuss nominations for the 2021 vestry class. If you feel called or know someone who would be a great candidate, please let me or someone on vestry know. We also heard from the formation committee that our Bible studies, small groups, and sacred ground circles are going strong. There's still space in a fourth circle to be formed. Please contact Nancy McMahon if you're interested in joining. Please pray for your rector, staff, and vestry as we prepare for this remote Advent season. Thank you. And thank you, Melissa. Some other announcements. Um, some of you may have missed the deadline for ordering Christmas greens from our youth. Well, Lee ordered a few extras, so if you're interested, please contact her at lconkle at stpetersdelmar.net, 
and you can pick up those greens when they arrive in early December. It's hard to believe. It seems silly enough when we start talking about Christmas greens in October, but indeed we are two weeks away from Advent, which just blows my mind. Um, so next weekend is our Advent wreath kit drive-through event. And I hope all of you, uh, children of all ages, will take advantage of this opportunity. Please do email Sarah Holmes at S Holmes, just like Sherlock, at stpetersdelmar.net and RSVP so that we have a wreath there for you. Even if you don't want a wreath, we will have an Advent gift for you to help uh, make your time of Advent in your home extra holy. So I hope that we'll see you then. Our um, Sunday forums continue with The Path at 10 o'clock on Sundays. And you're welcome to join us anytime for those. Also, um, you have enjoyed the music that uh, Tasha and her wonderful musicians have offered through this really unusual season in the church's life. Well, she has made a playlist on our YouTube channel and we will share a link to that. If you just need a pick me up, you can play the beautiful music that she and our, our other singers um, have created during this time and fill your world with some musical joy. So do check the announcements in the bulletin for a link and also your regular e-blast for that. And finally, on December 5th, mark your calendar because the thrift shop is having an outdoor boutique. We won't have our fashion show this year, a downside of our COVID situation, but we will have uh, a patio boutique and an opportunity to support all the ministries that the thrift shop supports uh, by having a little fun on December 5th. So I hope we will see you there. Are there any other announcements I was supposed to make that I forgot? No? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.